Greetings everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm your host Captain Rye and today's video has got me back in my favorite tier 9 destroyer, the Fletcher. But that's not what this battle is going to be mostly focused on. If you're watching this video on the day that it's published and you're in the United States, I'd like to wish you a happy Thanksgiving and I hope you're enjoying all of the good food, good drink, and tolerating your family. Just the same as I am doing now. As the battle gets underway, the battle here is a tier 10 battle. It's on Tears of the Desert, everybody's favorite map, and it's everybody's favorite game mode, especially on this map. It's Epicenter. Now, a lot of people dislike this game mode, and there's some pretty good reasons. And a lot of people really dislike this game mode on this map, and there's some really good reasons. But I'm going to show you in this video, hopefully, the best possible way for you to win this game. Push the center and do well. Now, you can see here I've managed to push all the way up into the center cap right away. And you can see there, almost as soon as I got into the cap, the cap stopped counting. That tells me that there is an enemy destroyer in the center zone with me. If you're in a destroyer, especially something that's relatively sneaky, like a Fletcher, like a Gearing, a Yugamo, or a Kagiro, getting up into the center cap zone right away is a very important start. Now you can see here, I'm kind of meandering around in the cap. I'm looking at my detection range, and I'm very cautiously moving ever closer to the center. In the meantime, my torpedoes are available, and I'm going to get them off down that center channel. And I'm going to do that because there's usually a cruiser or two that like to pop up down there. Now, you'll notice that I'm not alone here in the center cap circle. I have a friendly gearing, and I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to swap positions with him as he moves forward, and I'm going to go ahead and get behind him. This is good for me because I don't know what destroyers are here in the cap circle with us. As my torpedoes continue out there, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to trade paint with the gearing, but I managed to connect with an enemy destroyer with one of my torpedoes. That, unfortunately, was the enemy Fletcher. I feel really bad. To the enemy Fletcher player, if you watch my channel, I'm really sorry you just happened to end up at the wrong spot at the wrong time. And I say I'm sorry because I know how salty I get when a friendly destroyer is the first blood, especially to another destroyer. Now, you'll notice as soon as that Fletcher died, we immediately started capping this center location. That indicates to me that he came up here, but he didn't have anyone else come up with backup. And there was at least one destroyer that could come up and back him up, and that's the Benson, who has popped up here. Now, in this particular case, a lot of destroyer captains will now start go looking for new targets. They'll leave the cap, and they'll start hunting battleships. They'll start hunting down other destroyers here. And that's actually not something you want to do. In fact, in Epicenter, it's counterintuitive. You see, once you've captured one of the rings of Epicenter, as long as you have ships remaining in that ring, even if the enemy pushes into it, you're still going to continue to gain points off of it. More importantly, as long as I stay here in the center cap, it means the enemy team cannot capture any of the two outer rings as well as not being able to capture or contest or even stop the points from accumulating here in the center ring. And at Epicenter, especially on Tears of the Desert, that's actually really important because you don't have much other option to get friendly ships other than destroyers up into this center ring here due to its exposure to the enemy. Now, I'm going to go ahead and like I said, I'm going to stay here in the center ring and I'm going to look for targets of opportunity. One of the advantages to my particular destroyer is that I've got a fast torpedo reload so I can look at optionable targets and I've got a Montana back over here who's sort of pushing this direction. I'm going to continue to meander. I'm going to use my smoke screen as cover. I don't really want to get spotted. Other than the Fletcher, there's actually one other ship that I'm really, really afraid of running into, and that's the Henry, 
tier 10 French cruiser that's on the enemy team. I did hit something in that smokescreen. I'm not sure what I hit. It could have been the Benson. It could have been something else. Torpedoes coming in here. If you look at the spread there, there's three sets of five. That tells me that's going to be the Shimakaze. Now, because I know those torpedoes came in there, I am spotted. That, again, is the Shimakaze. Rather than engaging the Shimakaze, because there's a lot of ships around that can shoot me, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to maneuver myself, and I'm going to get out of line of sight. I don't want to engage. I don't want to open up. I don't want to be the primary target. Now, you notice I briefly left the center cap, but I got back in it. And I got back in it before the Shimakaze entered into it. So now the Shima cannot capture the center cap location and as a result my team is secure with the points continuing in our favor. And because he can't capture it, it also means as long as I'm here, like I said, nobody can capture the outer two rings. Granted, looking at the minimap situation, it's not like they could capture the outer two rings anyway, because we have a lot of ships back there. I get torpedoes off of that Henry, but that Henry was broadside onto a Yamato, so the Yamato destroys the Henry. Now, I'm pushing up here, and I don't have a lot of support, because all of my battleships and cruisers are still behind islands. This is pretty typical in this particular map, but I'm pushing up here, and I'm looking for that Shimakaze. I'm looking for him because I know I can engage him, and looking at the minimap situation with the other enemy ships that are currently spotted, I know that I should be relatively okay to engage him and be able to take him without taking too much damage myself. Now I spotted him, I popped a smoke screen, I got a set of torpedoes off in his general direction. And I start taking shots in there, that's what I was afraid of. You'll notice though that he's popping his smoke screen. Because his smoke screen's popped, that means I can actually leave my smoke screen and go chase him down and not worry about him seeing me. But it's a Shimakaze, I'm expecting torpedoes in the water, so I start moving, get my bow pointed towards that smoke screen, and sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Dodge those completely. Unfortunately for me, he also dodges my torpedoes, so I'm not able to get a nice another destroyer kill there. But look at that. The damage that I caused to him was enough there that our Yugamo is actually engaging him. Again, I'm staying in the center cap here, and I'm not going to go ahead and pursue him. I'm not opening up on him because he's not close enough. Plus, the Yugamo seems to be ripping into him quite nicely, and I'm going to go ahead and let him continue to do that. In fact, I think it's our Yamato who actually secures the kill on that Shimikaze. And now, with him dead, there's no enemies in that center circle. And by being in the... Or, I'm sorry, in the second ring. By being in the center circle, I'm capping that second ring. So, again, I don't have to leave this location. Plus, as I mentioned before... As long as I'm here, the enemy team can't capture. So I know enemy destroyers and enemy cruisers are going to have to come up and challenge me. And that sets the terms of the engagements to my advantage. Because I know they're going to have to come challenge me. I know that I can lay the ambushes where I want them. I control the avenues of approach here. And can basically torpedo all of the channels that they're going to go through when approaching me. Now get torpedoes off. There is an Izumo hiding back behind those islands there. You can see there he's popped up briefly. We managed to secure the second ring. That's going to give my team a massive advantage when it comes to generating points. The enemy team's currently down on ships. Not too much though. The game really could go either way. I drift out of the center circle again, but this time it's okay because there's nobody even in the second ring to challenge me. Enemy Benson pops up there. You saw him just briefly. There he is. He's very, very low health. He's about to detect me, so I'm going to go ahead, open up on him with my guns anyway because... Well, what's he going to do about it? Managed to take him out of the game there. But doing so exposes me to the battleships that are back over there. Fortunately, for the most part, they don't seem to be particularly interested in shooting at me at the moment. And my smoke screen is almost up. Secondary shots coming in here. You see that Montana has paid attention. And he starts getting his turrets 
traversed over here. Take a big ol' hit. Not sure what hits me, but I'm actually pretty positive that what did just hit me was actually the rune off in the distance there. And we're going to see more shots coming in from the rune here. Now, I kind of want to take a break from talking about Epicenter and how to counter and deal with it and talk about that rune there. Look at that rune's shots. Just keep coming in. They keep hitting me. They keep knocking stuff out. I'm pretty sure that guy is using one of those gray area mods that allows you to see exactly where your shots are falling on the minimap so that you can keep firing accurately at the same spot because in my opinion if he was pulling his gun camera back every time there's no way that guy should be able to repeatedly hit me in my smoke screen even RNG Jesus isn't that cruel now I found myself in a bit of an awkward situation here fortunately the rune is no longer able to hit me but I've got the Montana pushing up here. But look where the Montana is. I'm going to leave. I'm not going to sit around in my smoke screen. I don't have the health for that. My torpedoes are on cooldown. I pop my speed boost, rush back into the center circle, and I'm actually going to go ahead and use my own smoke screen as a cover as I leave. And this is excellent for me because he made the mistake of pushing around the other side of my smoke screen giving me the opportunity to get out there. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to start running towards the friendly ships. You see there on the minimap, they've all come around, they've started pushing up, and I'm going to rush towards them. But torpedoes are back up again. I'm waiting for the second set to be available so I can get a nice big spread there. I'm kind of expecting him to continue to bow on here, but just in case he decides to maneuver a little bit, I want to have a nice spread by comparison. So get those off, split them, basically one, one half, one the other half, and there you can see he starts turning a little bit. He's actually going to go try and sit in my smoke screen, but that smoke screen, as you can see, the, the smoke timer is going to dissipate here very, very shortly. So that's not going to be much of a cover for him. And I'm kind of hoping I can hit him with some torpedoes. Can I do it? Come on. Connect. Yes, I managed to connect with a couple there. He's very low health there, and that's the end of him. And it's the end of the game. Managed to secure only 93,000 damage in that game. First blood there, three kills. But primarily, the way that game ended up as such a dominating victory was simply because as a destroyer captain, especially one that was multi-versed with torpedoes and guns, I just stayed in that center cap, rushed up there, came up with backup, was able to destroy the challenging destroyer on the enemy team, and then stay there and challenge and destroy any opponent who came in to try and knock me off my position. Top of the team for XP earned at 2300 base XP, a very good battle overall. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, hit the subscribe follow button, and leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, you can do so by liking and following me on Facebook. If you'd like to help support me in the channel, as well as gain additional supporter perks, you can do so by becoming my supporter on Patreon. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see featured on my channel, you can send it to my email. And if you'd like to watch me play various games live, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. And once again, have a happy Thanksgiving. This is Captain Rye, signing off.